Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Our guest today is Johnny Mosley. He made his name as a freestyle skier and was the first athlete to get hardware from the Olympics and the X Games. And while those athletic achievements are very special, here's what's even more special about Johnny and how damn cool he is. Demonstrated by the following list of notches he's racked up since. He was named Sportsman of the Year by the U.S. Olympic Committee in 1998. He was given the key to San Francisco after a parade in his honor on what Mayor Willie Brown declared Johnny Mosley Day. He's been on the cover of Rolling Stone, hosted Saturday Night Live, and given the commencement address at UC Berkeley. He was a college dropout at the time and has since earned a B.A. in American Studies focusing on consumer and popular culture from that hallowed institution. How appropriate. He's also hosted MTV's Real World Road Rules Challenge, has narrated a dozen of the Warren Miller ski movies. Of course, he's been in a few of them before he took to the mic. He's hosted a serious XM show called The Mosley Method, is a co-host of American Ninja Warrior, and if you're in the Bay Area, you've heard him a million times on the Alice Morning Show with Sarah and Vinny and on the Johnny Mosley Podcast. He's now the proprietor of Mosley's, a fantastic sports bar in Corte Madera, California. You should go there. He's right where he grew up in Marin County, and I know I speak in superlatives a lot, but I swear if you ever get to spend any time with Johnny, you'll say, he's got to be the coolest guy I ever met. Now, in the spirit of celebration of Johnny and his athletic endeavors, okay, we're not comparing ourselves to a guy who won a gold medal, but Pete and I have a couple of endeavors of our own. Pete's swimming so much, he's doing the Coronado Seal Memorial Swim on Saturday, September 21st to benefit the Seal Veterans Foundation. And we encourage you to go to sealveteransfoundation.org to see what they're all about. And if you're in San Diego next Saturday, go watch Pete come up out of the water in a sexy sunga from Sunga Life. You'll be glad you did that. It'll be a fun event. I have undertaken a body comp challenge at Diablo Barbell where we're going to get the results back on Sunday, September 23rd. We'll publish them right here in an episode with my strength and conditioning trainer, Ted O'Neill, so you can hear if my fat ass is actually getting less fat. Anyway, it'd be remiss of me not to mention that Johnny Mosley was the first Puerto Rican on the U.S. ski team. He's one of now the elite few alums of the Break It Down show to have been born on a U.S. territory, along with myself, my brother, my cousin Daryl, my cousin Corey, and his fellow Boricueño Artemis Prime. You're about to find out that Johnny and Pete go super way back to before anybody knew either of them, and look at them now. Seriously, we've had some damn fine individuals on this show, but perhaps the coolest among them is our guest today, our friend Johnny Mosley. Lions Rock Productions. <laughs> This is Jay this Moore. Is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this is East. Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Moran. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. Hey, this is Johnny Mosley, and you're listening to The Break It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. Yes, you are. Johnny Mosley is an icon of freestyle skiing, and if you don't know who he is, just stop listening. <laughs> he is also a television personality. He's been around for a long time. We're big fans. And he's a fellow podcaster. He's got a show called, guess what, the Johnny Mosley Podcast. <laughs> and this is where you give me shit for it being an original name. Well, okay, we could. <laughs> we could do that. Or Pete Thank started you. to say... Well, I was going to say, uh, in 1994, we were yeah, drinking thanks. in France, La Clusaw. Yep. And uh, that French guy was like, Johnny S. La Future, uh -huh. a freestyle skiing. And uh -huh. it was true. What is Johnny <laughs> today? Well, definitely not the future of freestyle skiing. That's <laughs> that's true. What is Johnny? That's a good question, Pete. I mean, today I am a kind of just a, uh, a hustling dad, I yeah. would say. You know, I'm hustling. And being a trying to be a, a, a good dad and trying to, you know, make money and be, you know, continue to like try to do new things. And like, it, that's it. I'm just, uh, you know, living. Yeah. I'd say. Yeah, yeah. First of all, let's understand that when someone calls you the future of a major sport, sure. with someone like Edgar in front of you. Yeah. Who was like the pinnacle. That's that's pretty incredible. And then to live up to it. You really did. You, yeah. you met that prophecy. 
But now, yeah. back in that era, we were young and, and did a lot of stupid things. We, we were like jackass before <laughs> yeah. there was jackass. We yeah. did all kinds of crazy crap. Yeah. Like Todd would jump off of anybody, any metal thing, any cement thing, and right into the water, barefoot water skiing. Yeah, yeah. Just ridiculous things, right? Yeah. But now you have kids. Yeah. <laughs> and they're boys. Yeah. <laughs> so how does that sit with you? Are they also bananas, or did you? It, uh... it scares the living crap out of me. I mean, I literally, I'm so terrified of that age range yeah what you know from 15 right around you know to extent into 25 yeah. you know like all the crate cliff jumping and all the crazy stuff we got up to and but but at the same time i'm trying to make sure they are badass little dudes yeah you know what i mean yeah, like yeah, yeah. i don't yeah, want them to be give scared them space to do yeah. that i want them to take some risk and so you know i'm just the other day, I'm thinking of this one moment, right? My kid, he's learning to do backflips and, you know, and yeah. all that stuff. And he wants to do it on skis. And I'm trying to put the regulator on him and my oldest one. And, you know, we were up at the in the Delta and he, like, climbs up on a piling and, you know, can I go backflip off of this? And I'm like, okay, yeah, but get down in the water and check and make sure there's nothing on the bottom. <laughs> yes, like, yes. So it's like a, yeah. I, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm simultaneously teaching them to be super stupid, crazy, extreme yeah. guys, but do it in a safe way. Yeah. That's like my <laughs> approach. That's where I'm at now. But it scares the crap out of me, dude. How, I'm just mad I'm, I didn't have like five kids. Yeah. Because two is the risk. I mean, the risk of losing a, a teenage boy is high. Yep. Super high. Like, Especially like in, in that's, with your that's pedigree. Why- yeah, yeah, and that's why 50, 100, 200 years ago, you had to just pump right. out as many kids as you could because a third of them would keel over for yeah, some exactly. one reason or another. Boys, is, I mean, especially boys, they're just yeah rambunctious. And I'm not sure there's a lot you can do about it. So the thing that creates that did not skip a generation. It's yeah. like it went from you. They've got it. They've yeah. got the fever. They, they do. They do. I can tell. And, and it's hard to tell if it's like straight. You don't know my brothers, but yeah. it, this all comes from my my brothers, and and I guess for some, in the most part, my dad's a bit of a risk taker too, you yeah. know. But you know, my growing up with my older brothers who are five and six years older than me, who Rick particularly, yeah, the middle brother. I mean, the guy. I was a follower, right? I followed him, and he is a guy who would like do stuff based on. This stuff he, you know, he he thought of and yeah. would see and was not afraid to do it the first time. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think it's hard to say if it's genetic or if it, you know. It's, I think there's some a little bit of both, or if sure. it's me, or if it's led by example, or even led by them knowing who I am. Yeah. How much footage of you have they seen? Like, did they see you in San Francisco in 2005 at oh. the top of Folsom Street? You know, because anything that you say, like, hey, that's a little risky. You shouldn't. Dad, right. Come on. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's a piece of footage I'm not sure they've seen. Okay. Um, yeah. the, the ski jump in San Francisco. That's a good question. They, they've seen a lot. They just find stuff on the internet. Yeah. But, but I don't like sit down and show it to them. Right. But uh, they, they've seen quite a bit. Yeah. Let's go back, though, because okay. we're talking about we got we got a couple things to get out of the way. First of all, we are at Mosley's. Yeah. In this is Corte Madera, right? That's right. We're yeah. at Mosley's in Corte Madera. Now, this place is a sports bar, yeah. and what better sports bar could you be in than the one that's owned by Johnny Mosley? Hey, this is Pete. Real quick, I just want to let you guys know we are proud to announce our official support of Save the Brave, a certified nonprofit 501c3 with a charter of helping veterans with post traumatic stress. Here's how you can help go to savethebrave.com, click on the link on the website, and my recommendation is this. Subscribe. Give them 20 bucks a month. You've got subscriptions that you can turn off right now that you're not using that are $20 a month. Swap that out. Get involved. Let's help these folks out. And what better sports bar could you be in than the one that's owned by Johnny Mosley? <laughs> by the way, come on Thursdays where the special is $5 cheese pizza and there's $2 pizza. beers. Yeah, yeah. So do that. Any day of the week, though, there's something going on. And this place is this place is fucking beautiful. Yeah. This place is amazing. Yeah. So uh, come down to Corte Madera, everybody, and, and check out uh, Mosley's. Also, you've got the best fucking podcast theme song in the entire business. Oh. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right on, I don't it's skip so it. Good. Oh yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. Come on. It, it's uh 
Also, yeah. you should well, be president. Thank, and thanks for the plug on yeah. Mosley's. <laughs> I'm uh, looking at a poacher's cob right now, and then it's it's really fun to have a spot to to hang and and you know yeah and do stuff. But yeah, the the podcast theme song. When I started doing this podcast, it was mainly to review products and stuff for a sponsor I had called Peter Glenn Skiing Sports. But I realized I didn't really want to do it alone. Yeah, I, I just I'm not good at like turning on the mic, and it's no fun. Yeah, it's no fun. Like I love talking to you guys. You want to vibe, it's no right? Fun. So I started looking for someone I could bat go back. Bat, you picked go a good someone, of, sure. and someone that could actually do the technical stuff. Yeah, because I don't want to. I don't. I don't. I don't want shitty audio. Yeah, I'm a guest on the morning show Alice Radio a lot. Yep. and there's a guy named Bryn who's an engineer there, yeah. or he's he's the producer. He's on air, but he's the one running the dials. You know, off the side one day I was like, hey, would you do this off the side? Like, produce this little podcast that you know, about equipment and stuff like that for this company I work with. He was like, yeah, I, I can do that in my sleep. You know, it's yeah. like not that big a deal. It's just, uh, you know, and I'm like, great. So let's start talking about it. He said to me, he's like, you know, you know, Sarah, she can, she's thinking about doing some podcast stuff as well. well that works and yep. Sarah's like this Uber radio yeah. show host that I, you know, ha- have, I've co-hosted with a lot in the city. And, and I just was like, there's no way, like she's not going to be able to do it. You yeah. know? No yeah. one's gonna be able to do it, and so that's sad. And so I kind of, but I, I ran it by her, and she was like, "Let's let me ask and see if they'll, you know, yeah. if my bosses and you know at the radio are interested in let me do it." And and uh, it all kind of just kind of came together from there. And then Intercom got together and said, "Oh, we'll, we'll be be a part of it." But the the and so it all came together. So now they're they're all producing it together f- for me. But the bonus is Sarah is like this musical. That's yeah. her love. She's amazing. She she's a incredible morning show host but sure she wanted to be a rock she's star got seriously she is a rock star. yeah i mean she she's been sing. around here in the bay area for so yeah, long and yeah. dominated the airwaves in the morning and yeah. you know part of it is the fact that that she's knowledgeable about everything that comes on and including i mean and having you on guesting all the time yeah i mean you just kind of fit into the chemistry yeah and so that's great man i'm really glad that she kind of got a blessing from the yeah from the brass. No, she she's she's great. And then the, the, um, I'm bringing this back around to the theme song. Uh-huh. So when we were getting it together, I was like, but I want her. Her husband is kind of like behind the scenes guy. Yeah, John. He's involved in everything she talks about, but he's not like an on air guy. Right. But I love him. He's classic. I play softball with him. Mm. But and he is like a sick guitarist. You know, yeah. he, he writes songs and he's just they're so super musically talented. Really cool guy. And I'm like, but I want John, you know? Yeah. And so John came <laughs> on. I'm getting the want, package. I want the guitar. Like, oh, I was going to start playing guitar. So then, And then we had John. And so John would just sit there and play a little bit and, and kind of quiet at the beginning. But they kept talking about wanting to do this theme song. Yeah. You know? And it, I never heard anything. I never heard anything. And then, boom. This and they guy, just laid that on they you. They laid that thing on me. And, and my wife heard it. It was like. I don't know if you can like you know lay that out there. I'm like, like it's a joke. She's like, I don't it's know if awesome. people are gonna get that it's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> but that's good. I'm glad you guys liked it. Yeah, it's catchy, man. The thing about the song, everybody, is it's a lot of fun, and you should go listen to it. So it's the Johnny Mosley podcast, J O N N Y. If you don't know, everybody knows it's Johnny Mosley. Go look up the Johnny Mosley podcast. I appreciate it's the, funny uh, as hell. Appreciate the, the cross promotion. Yeah. 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 I mean, one of the things that we love about this podcast business is that it's people are kind of gravitating to it. I mean, you don't, you know, you didn't have to take it on as a medium, but it's fun. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're having a good time with it and here we all are. So, yeah, you know, and I, and I love podcasts. I mean, it's crazy. It's interesting. I started listening to podcasts with like with cereal, like everyone else, Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and then uh, just kind of went from there. But it, oh man, now I'm like hooked on them there what kind of shows do you watch or listen to yeah i think i listen to a lot of freakonomics you okay. know that's definitely yeah. like my yeah. my go-to i i'm like a self-help guy uh-huh you know i'm always trying to like learn something with them if i'm driving or something and that's and that's pretty entertaining yeah we come from really singular worlds you know like a lot of combat time you've got yeah. all your time traveling the world as a, as a ski we have no idea like people have no idea what our day-to-day lives are like you know like yeah. i listen to your show and you you guys would do um inflate like swiss ball training in the hallway of whatever hotel you were in because yeah. there's there's no gym you know yeah. and i find that i bring a lot of those things from my own world context like this is what this is like when you're in afghanistan on the side of a mountain yeah because it just it brings in there's things you would never even think to like you wouldn't even think they were special 
until you say them out loud and someone's like, wait, you guys worked out in the hallway? Right. You know? So I think that guy's fucking a goat. <laughs> no, maybe not that. No. <laughs> I have Is seen, that a true story? Well, I have been to... Um, <laughs> Hey, so, he's looking over at you like, yeah, I'm fucking yeah. a goat. I was in Afghanistan, Afghanistan and I got invited to a party. <laughs> and, uh, there's no women around, right? It's just a bunch of dudes. I'll say. So it's all these like 20-something-year-old dudes who never shower. They're in a room. There's no AC or anything. So they're just getting hot and lathered up. It's like eighth grade, right? They're all horny. And then they start lap dancing with each other. And just it's super homoerotic, but not to them. To no. them. It's just a party. Ah, uh, yeah. This is what we do. One guy's sitting there playing his like Fat Albert band guitar that he made up for himself and everything, <laughs> and I'm just like trying to like not breathe because it smells so horrible. Oh yeah, yeah. And then just like, what in the <laughs> fuck? Just There's no beer. Watch this freak show. There's no like hot chick pictures on the wall. It's just dudes writhing on each other's laps on the floor, like grinding. And I'm like, what is going on? What is going on? So, but nothing. Nothing, quote unquote. No, but I mean, it, it, environment is everything. You yeah, know? and it's like survival, uh, mental survival. Yeah, you know, like just figuring out things to do, and that's I can't even imagine. But I, I totally am there. I, I see it. Like, yeah, I'd be right there. You know, I, actually, I mean? but I, I would was, be right there. All these mountains around, I'm, I thought oh, it'd be awesome to have Johnny come out here and hella ski and like do like a show, like yeah. a couple of combat guys, and you just drop in and then ski because. Yeah, yeah, no one's ever skied these. Did mountains. you see stuff? I mean, I, I've seen some skiing over there. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. Yeah. Uh, did you see some stuff that looked skiable? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, because the mountains are just they're so high up. Yeah, they just get a ton of snow. Yeah, and uh, you can see it's just fat, fat yeah. snow. How Not long were you snow. there? Afghanistan. I was there for about two and a half years total. Damn. But at Iraq, a lot more. Yeah, a lot more. How many years in Iraq? Well, basically from 04 to eleven. Mm-hmm. Or twelve, I was I was gone most yeah. of the time, over half the time. Yeah. So uh, I've got over a thousand combat missions that I've been outside the wire on. So a lot, so Iraq years, years and years. Yeah. All over the place. Because you were when you came to see us in in Lock Luzah, you had you were pretty new, like yeah, you know, yeah, maybe I was a couple I, years in or something. Or yeah, I just gotten started, yeah. and that was ninety four. So wait, ninety five. Yeah. Winter of so I had just gotten to my unit. I'd been there maybe. I didn't even know anybody. That's why no one would come down with me. I was in Germany. Where were you? Oh, you're in Germany. In Germany, yeah. yeah and I'm yeah. like, I, they're good. U.S. ski team is going to be like five hours down the road. Yeah, I'm going, and they're yeah. like, ah, let's see. Like, you stupid. New guys going on a road trip, uh-huh. and they let you go on. on I it rented by a car. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it got fucked up. <laughs> it got tore up. I remember, yeah, it's like a little white yeah. Renault or something. I remember you rolling up and yeah. just like so psyched, you know. It was and incredible. we were staying in that like long apartment, yeah, the bunk beds. Yes. I mean, yeah, and, and it was world championships. And I remember you being, you, you, he's always like a positive guy, right? Like tons of energy. And I just remember being stoked to see you. Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> you know, you've always been like a part of our family. You it's know? crazy. What happened to the car? Oh, so I had this great idea. I was Did you to get the insurance? Did, were you the like? Yeah, no, I'll it take didn't matter. It, uh-huh. it was like Playboy status. I was like the poor Playboy, where all of my money uh-huh. was for blowing on chicks and booze and everything else. Okay, you know. So just like now. So, yeah. So I yeah, <laughs> without the money, without the chicks, it'd be a little bit of booze. I'm like, hey, put all your ski gear on top of the car. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah. and we'll just drive it down. I never thought two things of it. And then the German guy's like, ah, and he lost his mind, and it cost me a lot of money. Okay. Didn't we have to get from like our apartment down to the bus or something, something? like that? Yeah. And I think we loaded all our gear on your car. Yes. Because it's Lacusa is like on a hillside, and it's like you crazy. Basically, it's not like the stage where you pull up and you're right in front of your condo. You know, like they you, you, you get out at like the crazy uh, condo yeah. association, and then you drag your shit up to your condo. And uh, whenever we would go from town to town, we'd either be in these like tour buses. And uh, they they couldn't get up these roads, so we'd have to drag our gear like All down the these the snowy roads. And yeah. I think I we yeah. remember using your car. Yeah, that's exactly to, what happened. Uh, and we and my brother and I used to carry like eight pairs of skis, and so we had these like rolly bags that were this big around. And so like anything we could do to not carry those fuckers. Yeah, and I didn't care. Yeah, and and I really ultimately when the guy gave me the bill, and I'm like, yeah, whatever, yeah. put it on my account. I don't care. 
And then from That's Germany, the sorry, I, I don't mean to. Yeah, like, you do it. But from Germany, when did you? Then where did you go from there to there? And then to Bosnia. Uh, Bosnia. Out every day, talking to people, drinking, making friends, uh-huh. being a positive guy uh-huh. during a civil war. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was. <laughs> That's and, true. And what was the job? Like, what was the spy? The yeah, job? I was out oh. talking to folks, trying oh, yeah? to trying to find things out. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, That's and there's plenty of crazy in that. Uh huh. Craziest story is I, there was a bar full of ne'er do wells. And uh, they're like, my, my unit wanted us to go and check them out, but they weren't sure really like if they really wanted us to do that because we didn't. It turned out that everything worked out, but we didn't know in the time. Yeah. There's mines and people with guns and bombs and all kinds of shit. Yeah. And so we go to this bar and our plan, like we have no way to defend ourselves. There's four big five of us. Yeah. And so the plan was I would have a hand grenade in my hand. and I would just pull it up, walk out if it got dicey. <laughs> You just show it to him. Yeah. Right. And then, and so ultimately, that meant pulling the pin. If you pull the pin and hold it, it won't ever go. Oh, okay. But it's right? scary. So, yeah. 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 I, I'd be like, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm out. It was intense. Yeah. It turns out it, it fucked me up later on oh. in my brain. And one of many things that, you know, because you keep having these little cuts. Anyhow, so um, I realized pretty quick. You that mean we, you kept thinking back on that moment? Just that, that I think just you can reach a certain of, level of like your body, you, you can physically and mentally withstand it. But when you keep going above that barrier, uh-huh. You know, it just, it just, it, I think it bores a hole to your brain chemically. Of, of, of situations. Right. Is, like, they, like just that situation you described. Right. Like, that's just one of many. Right. So, yeah, and I just continue you wake all up that up to like, a lot of trauma. Like, like, yeah, like, what were we, th- like, kind of, yeah. you know. I, very similar to what you've got to go uh, through. Uh, to- that was all very rational for you. Yes. You're like, oh, well, we'll hair- carry a grenade into the bar. Right. And we'll pull the pin, and that's going to be our, you yeah. know, if something happens. Right. Everybody's gonna let me go. That's like jumping off a cliff, you know. Like that's yeah, like doing you know, a triple, well, triple, I mean, triple. I you know? wouldn't compare it, but right, you start to th- wake. You wake up now, and you're like, "What the? Who, yes, who was I? Yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, carry on. Well, it's, it's supposed to be about you, but that it's the same thing, right? If you're gonna go do, you got to work your way up to a, a triple twisting, triple backflip. Yeah. On a mountain. Yeah. You know, so. You just slowly work your way into that. And I think along with that comes a change in how your body processes sure. cortisol and adrenaline. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I think that's accurate. There are a lot of times where that's I would just get keyed up yeah. for 25 hours straight right. and just be like, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go do it, you know? Yeah. And then things like a fight or a whatever. Yeah. Not a big deal. Yeah. You know? Hell, I go to sleep after fighting. You know, yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a unique life that we've had to live. Yeah. I know uh, maybe, let's say five years ago, I hit a gate where I was like, oh, this isn't reality what I've been doing. It's all make-believe. Right, right. And I sort of matured in a lot of ways. In yeah. a lot of ways, I'm not. I'm glad to go do shots right now and all that kind of stupid stuff. But <laughs> if you hit that gate where you're like, oh, wait, it's different. I mean, I already had a kid and all that stuff. That didn't really change me. Yeah. But there was some, maybe I aged out. And I was like, nah, you guys go do all that crazy shit. Oh, man. I mean. I I I I think I'm there. I mean, I still, like you said, get wrapped up and do stupid stuff. But um, for the most part, I think physically, you just don't want to feel bad. Like I want to feel good, yeah. a lot, capable. Yeah, yeah. And I find my emotional well-being to be very fluid and sensitive. Yeah. And so, I think. And, and whether that's because I'm age or I do feel like some of it is thinking about what I've done and, and like having memories of life kind of impede your brain yeah. with the wee hours in the morning yeah, and trying to avoid that stuff again. So yeah. I think it's your body, nat- your, your mind naturally telling you like, you can't do that shit again. Yeah. Whatever it is. I Whatever. mean, physically, yeah. Yeah. emotionally, you know, sex, like every, you know, whatever it, it is, you know, the whole yeah. nine yards. So I think I'm just, I, I'm more cognitive of my emotional well being. Yeah. When that is like everything derives from that, right? Yeah. Like if you drink too much, you don't sleep so well. Yeah. And then you feel like depressed. And so, <laughs> so if you, and if you eat shitty or if you're out of shape, yeah. Well, then you feel bad about yourself and then you drink more and you don't sleep. It's like it's yeah. all connected. I have this baseline. What's good is I have this baseline of what I, I do know what it lo- is like to feel really good, like a young, healthy, strong guy yeah. from when you're a youth. And even though you can never be that person again, you at least know what that's like. You were that person. You you were that. And I think that's a valuable thing to know, like. 
what it feels like to be just like running a blue flame yeah. and firing and being able to do anything. And I think that's great. I don't think you'll ever get back there, but it's good to know what it takes to get there. And that that's what's changed me is I'm like, man, I'm not, I, I, I loved being that person and I want, I want to get, be as close to that as I can all the time. Yeah. This, whatever version of that, yeah, it's closest to that that I, I we want, can get away with continuing I want to, to stay be. within like, you know, a, a range. I don't I don't want that to be totally gone. Yeah. You know, and that's motivating for me. When I hear you say that. Yeah. I picture all of us skiing and you had the confidence to go. This is before all of the, you know, the accolades and the gold medal. This is way before that. And uh, you were skiing down and this is back with like the trick was twister, you know, yeah, yeah, spread yeah. twister. Right. Yeah. And you went up. And you did a 180, a spread like a fucking TIE fighter. Oh, the Bronco. So yeah. just so everybody can listen. Oh, 180 Cossack. Oh, shit. Yeah. I was working on that. But bam, yeah. full out like yeah. a TIE fighter. Except yep. for this TIE fighter, for everybody listening, is flying backwards down the hill. So he's yeah. back. He's looking up at the top of the mountain. His back is looking down. <laughs> and then he's like, I'm no longer a TIE fighter. He closes it up, brings it back around. 180, spread 180, Cossack, or whatever it is. Yeah, whatever yep. that thing is. Yeah. Is that kid more confident than this kid? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, <laughs> that kid is probably is more confident than this guy. I mean, okay. you know, now I got life, you know, life is, it's very challenging to, yeah. you know, like it, it's an amazing, I tell people this when I tell kids this, when I go, you know, talk to them and it's like, you don't realize it at the time, but you're never going to have a time in your life when you can be singularly focused yes. on like one thing again, yeah. like you're going to, it's a short period of time. As soon as you start adding layers on it and jobs and relationships, like it's very hard to be like, well, I'm just trying to win the freaking Olympics and do get better at moles here. And it, when you can focus on something like that, it's not, not that hard to, to get into it and be yeah. good at it and feel a lot of confidence. Cause you're working on that single thing every day. Yeah. You're not like, you know, doing a, this podcast over here and trying to pick your kids up over here. And like, you never really dig in deep to one thing. And the reason I bring that up is because, you know, that trick kind of working on that trick, I was probably feeling like, yeah, dude, I, you know, I'm working on all this stuff. I know I'm going to nail that. And I was trying to work on different stuff, but, and then I, I think I achieved another level of confidence past, like that was probably 96, I think in that range. No, that's 95. early nineties, early nineties. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's early nineties. So, yeah, so I, I kept going. You know, I wasn't confident that I was going to, like, win the Olympics, but I was running a pretty high confidence that I yeah, was yeah, yeah. pretty damn good at what yeah. I was doing, you know, and, and feeling feeling good. So you still had one more gear. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, I was just – it turns out I was just getting started, really, yeah, yeah. in 91, you know. I didn't know that at the time, but, yeah. But there was nobody else on the mountain doing this. Like, his brother, Rick, is a world-class skier, like, legitimately. But then there was this – elevation when johnny would show up you're like what what in the heck is going on and it was it was like you could through you i could yeah. see the future yeah because he, like we would make fun of back scratchers and, yeah. and daffies and that shit and i'm like but what rick is doing at a world class level is not that yeah that damn trick i never could get either All right. like i never could dial that in to the point i i did it a couple maybe a couple times in competition yeah. but that was a trick i could never master like, i could never master it was just too many too many vectors like it's basically a straddle split just to get nitty-gritty on that because i can't believe you remembered that and yeah. brought it up because that's like that's going that's deep. going like <laughs> nobody's ever talked to me about that little yeah moment. Well, i've been but, waiting but in my mind that was a significant moment i remember work trying to work on that trick because yeah. i thought it would be so cool i was combining these two tricks a cossack which is like a straddle jump in gymnastics where you you jump up you at the peak apex of your of your height as you're going up you pull your your legs up and that inertia especially with the skis and boots continues your feet up but you put your chest down and with all that inertia you can do basically the splits in the air and i was always very flexible and worked on that flexibility in that range and so i could do a really good cossack and it's usually just a straightforward trick so i try to combine it into a 180 but of yeah. course when you go into the 180 you've got inertia in this direction and then you try to go down the split it wants you to want twist, to twist like, yeah those things are conflict it's yeah they they and you can never quite get it square you know and then you've got to obviously bring it back together and turn as well and it was really hard to do i could never really get it down it was actually turned out to be the dinner roll worked out easier than that thing <laughs> although that thing didn't work at first either so i was so disappointed when you didn't get rewarded for being free of style 
for that <laughs> jump. Yeah, you know? I like that free of style. But I mean, that is what freestyle is. Like you know, you, it everybody be. swims. What it's supposed the, to be, yeah. Everybody swims the Australian crawl because it's the fastest. If you have your choice, I pick the fastest. And that swimming. Was, it's called the Australian crawl. Yeah, that's Did the they technical term. Yeah, yeah. freestyle. Oh, who knows? You know, or whatever. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, that. yeah. But yeah, like it's the fastest. You want to win, so you do that. Interesting. And you talked about this last time you were on. Like you want the judges to go bam. Like holy cow, what is yeah. this thing? You yeah. know, and the dinner roll, or you know. By the way, I had the turkey sandwich, which is on the dinner oh, you roll. Did? Here oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Was it really on the yeah. dinner roll? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've got the poacher's cob sitting in front of me. This is one of the, my signature. This was the one item I was like, we have to have this on. So it's a cob salad, but instead of a hard-boiled egg, it's a poached egg. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I'll dig into that after that. I think we talked about this you know, last yeah. time, so we won't get into it. But but it's funny. Like The more – I just was – um. I was just talking about, I went on, I did an interview with the local news yesterday and because I just got nominated to the U.S. Olympic Hall of Fame. I've been voting. See All right. Yeah, yeah, I know. I need a bot, dude. I'm, <laughs> I'm never right. winning that thing. I yeah. need Apollo <laughs> Anton Ono. Like, Dara Torres. Multiple, she's going to Dara kick Torres, your ass. She's going to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where, who is um, that guy? Yeah, exactly. Nothing. Uh, yeah. Even the guys I'd never even heard of, like the uh, the shooter. Uh-huh. Did you see how many like gold medals he so got ridiculous. in separate Olympics? And yeah. well, I mean, crazy story. This is what um, this is what I want to ask you about the Olympics. People yeah. always say Michael Phelps yeah. is the greatest Olympian, but he yeah. won by that much of a fingernail for one of those gold medals, right? Ah, uh, sure. If he wins silver, then yeah, okay, great. Mark Spitz didn't have as many categories he could win in at the time. Yeah. So, who is the greatest Olympian? What is it? What is the greatest Olympian? Is it someone like the guy, the sailor guy, who's like Mark forget Reynolds. my medal? Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna go rescue this guy who's in the water. Oh, I think it was yeah. in Korea. Right. And right. he got like the right. Pierre de Kubrickon or whatever sure, award sure, because sure. he would show the Olympic spirit. Who is the greatest Olympian? Hey, this is Pete A. Turner from Lions Rock Productions. We create podcasts around here. And if you, your brand, or your company want to figure out how to do a podcast, just talk to me. I'll give you the advice on the right gear, the best plan, and show you how to take a podcast that makes sense for you, that's sustainable, that's scalable, and fun. Hit me up at Pete at BreakItDownShow.com. Let me help. I want to hear about it. Who is the greatest Olympian? So I, I have some opinions on this, and it's hard to talk about without sounding, you know, I'm going to absolve uh, like of all that. sour yeah. grapes or right. whatever. But uh, yes, I, I think that the idea that an, an Olympian like that has seven opportunities at one games yeah. to win seven medals right. is somehow elevated right. above someone who only has one or two shots or sure. one shot. Right. In fact, I would argue that the pressure is way greater. Right. Just mentally to know that you have another event after that. Like yeah. you've got 10 days to try to win a medal yeah. versus like your one shot that you've been training for your whole life. Yeah. We all know this is and, and look like a guy like Phelps and, and Spitz, they won medals over multiple games, which yeah, yeah. I think is in the, the heart. One of the hardest things to do, I think, is like what Sean White did. Yeah. Win a judge sport. Yeah. Over the course of three, what did he win? Three golds Something in four like that, Olympics. Yeah. yeah. To stay at the top. Not yeah. Long. In a judge That's, sport where you yeah. have to learn new tricks every year. And I'm not saying that swimmers don't have to learn new stuff, but yeah. you don't have to like add one full fucking rotation right. to your to your repertoire over the course of three olympics yeah you're talking about that so, kind of spread i mean that's creativity and perseverance and like perseverance oh, so glad you're saying this. I, I i mean i i hate to i you know phelps well, but, like all yeah, hail yeah. phelps and and you know it obviously look that we all know this is a media driven thing yeah and it's just a lot easier for nbc and everyone to right. They hang their medals and compare them to spits. And, yeah. But I think it's a valid argument. I mean, it should be like a percentage of well, how many tries did you have? Yeah. You know, batting and average Phelps would still be high on that. I, 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 that's what I'm saying. I'm not. Yeah, he's an incredible away athlete. From Phelps. And we're not taking anything away from him. But we are largely testing who's got the best VO2 max on the planet in the water. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, whereas yeah. opposed to like your ability to balance is incredible. But you're not the best balancer. You probably know. You probably know people that have that's incredible true. balance. That's right. So. You have to master the ability to, like, your internal gyroscope and know that you can't do right. this trick. I mean, how many hours did you put into the, the 180 Cossack 180? I mean, right. that's... Yeah, that never even worked out for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, a, it's really hard. And then so we had um, Eric Bergowist on, and he oh, talked cool. about... He was a multi-time Olympian, right? Yep. 
And, and I, I've used this act, you know, this thing a lot. He's like, the year I won the gold, I nailed it. I nailed the edge yeah. between going for it yeah. and not over going for it. One year I underwent and the other I overwent. And yeah. I didn't I didn't get the medal yeah. in those years. Yeah. So that is harder than if you took swimming out of the pool and you put it on a track, like one leg at hop for a hundred meters. Yeah. Followed by, you know, two leg at hop for a hundred meters. You sure. know, it's like sure. And God bless. I mean, it's hard to do what he did to Absolutely. be elite. But Absolutely. So who is it? Uh, summer and winter. Just 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 put it up there. Yeah. Just lump it in, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's the thing is there's just it's an and it's an impossible thing to define and they right. you know you it's defined by yeah I mean it's obviously the greatest Olympian is the one with the most Instagram followers I mean that's just <laughs> obvious that's true isn't that obvious that's so, true who is that who is that hmm. who, which Olympian has the most hmm. Instagram followers I mean in the end that's what it'll that's what it'll be well it's funny that they're doing this thing with a also with like the all-star game where it's a uh it's a vote greatest olympian oh olympian with most instagram followers who do you who do you think who do you think wow oh, that's tough to say summer Someone, what do you think summer what, or winter um it's gonna be summer and i'm gonna go with simone biles because she oh yeah herself. That is really well, good. You ha- and you have to be certain and the reason that doesn't work is got to be the same you have to be um a certain age right oh um, okay she's not even old enough I no, 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 no. But you but couldn't. Be. Yeah, Mark Spitz. Yeah, doesn't Mark Spitz. Yeah, he probably, couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or Eric Hyden, who won five different disciplines in the same sport. That's incredible to do right. that. Yeah. What, what comes to mind for you, John? Uh, Hope Solo. Hope, Hope Solo. Solo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a good call. The question is, do you count someone like Kobe Bryant? You know? Or oh like yeah, Olympian, right. You know, so there that, you go. That were that's the thing. Is no, I don't think you can be in a primarily team. You sport. can't be. A, okay, okay, I can't be. Because you need too much help. Well, see, now you're throwing all kinds of qualifications at it. It's like it's, fastest man. Yeah, 100 meters. What happens at 300 meters? All of a sudden, you're not the fastest man anymore. Right, right. I think the Simone's Bi- Simone Biles call is pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's probably a good, pretty good, good pick. She was flipping and twisting like all over the place. It's incredible. Did you see, yeah, that was pretty cool what she just did. The uh, yeah. d- uh, half Rudy or something like that. Yeah. And full double full. She did. Yeah. She did uh, freaking on the mat, full double full or double yeah. in or something. A wow. trick that's so dangerous they had to add an extra mat. Just in oh, case did they? In case failed. she came yeah. flying off yeah. the back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've but I don't know. I mean, in, in, all, in all seriousness, there is, it's impossible. That's just, yeah. you know, but, but, you know, uh, clearly Mark Spitz, I, I think Dan Jansen losing and coming back and losing and coming back was pretty impressive. Yeah. Right? Like to be expected and then lose yeah. and be expected. And lose. I would like to see a, a, a multi seasonal Olympic, like decathlon of some kind. Like you got to be able to get down a hill. You got to be able to shoot <laughs> something. You got to be able to, you know, oh, like a winter decathlon. Yeah. Winter, summer. Oh, like yeah. the, like yeah. uh, like they they take a handful of guys and make yeah. them go. And the, do you do it kind of all at once, where you go somewhere that's got both conditions, or do you go okay? First half takes place in the summer, oh. and the second half we're coming back in the winter, and then yeah. we're going to settle this thing. Which way do you do it? Maybe they should take like the top all the gold medalists from the Winter Olympics, yeah. and in the summer games they all compete against each other in like a. Yeah, in a multi-sport, See, there you like go. a superstars yeah. competition as like a showcase. Yeah, yeah. A like showcase. To- <laughs> there you go. See, that'd be good. <laughs> that'd be kind of cool. You know what I'd like to explore is you. Your brothers are five and six years older than you are. Yeah. And at some point, you identified yourself as I can ski better than these two guys. Do you think that that dynamic of youngest brother and the example that they set for you because they were significantly older than you physically yeah. more developed they're trying things and you're just looking at what they're doing and going oh yeah i can do that yeah at an age where like a uh, an oldest kid that doesn't discover those behaviors and just think well i'll just go emulate that that's how you get down the hill yeah i mean i was very lucky to have those guys i find like with my oldest son with no one above you it's almost like the role I have to fill a little bit, like show them brother, stuff, yeah. you know, to a certain extent, right? But it's a good question. I, I ne- it's, it's weird. I never in ever was like, oh, I'm better than Rick. Like yeah. to me, he's always better, and I'll still be like, shit. He's still like, he he he's still fundamentally better and stronger. So I, there was never a moment when I was like, oh, I'm better. I mean, obviously, when I started, when we started sparring, like our first time, I really challenged him and competed with him and and beat him was Norams. And uh, we were first and second on Noram. So it's not like we were far apart. Yeah. yeah. But I still, I don't even think I registered 
that we were like, you know, you're close enough together point. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was like, I, I still was like, Oh, I'm trying to be like him. And then, you know, and he was took on a very like coach role almost in that point. But yeah, I don't know. What, what was the, what was the question? How much did it matter that you had their example to look up to, to oh, create I, an elevated it was platform a, it's for everything. You. Yeah. I mean, there's no freaking way I go that the distance without, without them because a, starting with my older brother, I would have never been in the sport at that age. So I started freestyle skiing when I was nine or eight. At the time, freestyle skiing wasn't even in the Olympics, right? And that was because my older brother, Jeff, and and Rick, they saw freestyle skiing in the movies and around Squaw. And then Jeff was like way into, he was into extreme sports before they were extreme sports, right? He's a skateboarder, surfer, and he saw freestyle skiing was like, it's for us. This is what you ought to do this here. This is for us. Yeah. And went to my dad and said, we want to do this, not alpine racing. My dad, to his credit, wasn't like, no, that's fucking, there's no sport there. Yeah. Like, that's stupid. He was like, "Yeah, cool. You guys having fun? Do whatever Go you want. Go for it. Yeah. You know? So he put us over in there. Thanks, and, Mr. Um, Mosley. So then I was all of a sudden like the little guy. And they, basically my parents went to the team and said, "You can. T- we're going to, we'll sign these two kids up. But you got to take but him. But you got to take this guy too, because we're, <laughs> yeah. we're not going to take him somewhere yeah, else, right? You know. So I, all of a sudden now I'm like trying to keep up with all these guys and learning a new sport at a very young age when yep. I just had a huge head start. Yeah, just almost keeping up with them, but being yeah. five years younger. And then exactly, exactly, and they were like so cool that they would never exclude me. You know, they would always try to bring me in. Like, they'd drag me along, even if their buddies were like, come on, don't bring your little brother. They'd always be dragging me into situations I shouldn't have been in. Don't bring you know? my little brother. He's better than your dumbass. Yeah, ass. exactly. Yeah. So they, they were always, I, I was a, and then Rick is this, like, you know, his brain works in, you know, physics terms. That's yeah. how he likes to think. And our whole, hit, everything to him was engineering and how you could figure something out that like, came from my dad. And so he was kind of a harsh, a little bit of a harsh critic to himself and to me, which ultimately benefited me. I mean, he was an- analyzing all this stuff before video analysis was yeah. a thing. So he could get super every technical run with was you. like, when I was that young, we would dro- he would take me to summer camp to ski or to other camps or drive me to Utah where – Unless your parents doing that, no, I can't go because yeah. I'm too young. Like right. the camp won't even allow me to go because I have a chaperone, though. Yep. You know I can go. So now I'm like getting training that no other wow. kid's getting. Yeah. And I have a chaperone who's coaching me as well. I mean, it, it was literally. That's that, huge. That was everything. Yeah. For, for my friends who are listening in the audience, Rick. Well, like you said, he was mechanical. He was an engineer, and I'm going to unfairly, very <laughs> simplify what he did. But right, fastest down the mountain. With the best technical ability. He yeah. didn't have the amplitude that you had, but he was like, you're going to have to do this many turns this fast. Yeah, yeah. And that put pressure on everybody else who skied behind him. Yeah. Yeah. And he tried to bring some of that to what you were trying to do, I'm assuming. Yeah. Rick was like a super student of mogul skiing. You know, yeah. he, would, he was trying to figure out basically like how you do it better. And he would look at other athletes and synthesize what they were doing and yeah. you know, one day it'd be like oh you got to absorb deeper and then you know six months later it'd be like oh, we don't adorb- absorb so deep and it was always experimentation yeah. and that's how he figured stuff out and then he would pass that on to me so i was just following the train and he was you know i sur- he did air too and he was good in the air i i started to surpass him in the air look the bottom line is he learned stuff later than me which right. in gym in gymnastic type sports you know, when you learn something at nine yeah. versus even 13, yep. it's a big difference. Big so difference. I, had a, I, had a, I had a certain level of comfort in the air that he didn't quite have. And then he also started to be in pain. Right. His back started to hurt him yeah. early on. So he lost interest in the going that big. But very fortunate to have, have him, man. Totally. That was lucky. And now you've got a bar. Now I'm a, a sports bar owner. How about, the, how about the idea of opening kind of a sports bar? What? I mean, every yeah. every dude wants to open a sports bar. Right? Let's get yeah. that out of the way. Yeah. But yeah. then you figure out that it is actually a, a lot of work. Right. To open one of these things and to keep it open. What drove that? I've been advised so many times to not start a clothing business. Not start right. a, I mean, that's yeah. like the number one thing people say. Don't do a restaurant. Don't do a bar. Right. Yeah. And I've invested in a bar before and not even been in lost. So it's like, I know better. This situation was unique. It wasn't something I was necessarily seeking out. I wasn't out there with two kids and my, you know, 
mid forties thinking, dude, I'm going to open up a bar. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's definitely not something I was thinking about. Damn. Um, that's how I wanted that to go. But, uh, the, this particular spot, which is right in my backyard. Yeah. Even though I, I, I live in Tiburon, this is the town I use for everything. Like this yeah. is where I play softball. This is like where I shop. This is where I grew up in this little mall. And, um, the woman who partnered with is a restaurateur. She knows how to do restaurants, and she has a successful one called Tamil Pie in Mill Valley. And she had this space, and she it this space I knew from growing up, and it's always had this nice long bar. And to her, it it said sports bar. Yeah. And um, I think when she started like thinking about sports bar in this area, her friends were like, "You got to talk to Mosley. Yeah. And he's like, you know, and and I feel you know, honored that I'm kind of like in this town, I'm kind of a sports figure. And we have a lot of incredible athletes that are sure. from here and all yeah. that stuff. But we, we had been a customer of her restaurant. So she kind of knew who we were. And so she approached us and I just really liked her. I liked the spot. And then she has a very good aesthetic. You mentioned it's very like clean. And I was like, I want peanuts on the floor and pool table yeah. and shuffleboard. I want a spot. Cause I don't know if you ever made it to my, when I first was 22 and made a you know quick amount of money after the olympics i yeah. bought a house near my parents and this like awesome location but shitty house but, yeah you know it was Perfect. like party central yeah it was a frat house like rick lived there buddies lived there i was never around every time i'd come home we'd have a rager there it was great <laughs> yeah like a wood had a conversation pit that oh. was that was plywooded over so it was like a perfect dance floor oh. throw the dj in there i mean great times but you know i don't now the house is all tight and nice and my yeah. wife and I have this great home, but I can't even, I have to like, it's like a five-step approval to invite someone over. Right. Like I can't, there's no way I'm throwing a party there. Right. So when this came along, I was like, Oh, this is cool. I could have a spot. I could go yeah, have some beers with my buddies and then, and take off. And, and so Karen, you know, I had, I was like, I want pool tables. I want, you know, she already had the shuffleboard from, from she vetoed the, the peanuts floor. on the floor though. And then she vetoed the peanuts on the floor, which is great because that, that allows my wife to come here and feel right. comfortable and yes. nice drinks. And so it's a little like upscale bars. There's a game called hammer schlagen, which is uh a game that we play and it's a Canadian loggers game that uh-huh. you play when you have down days and ski lodges nice. up there. And so that's out in the back where you try to hit the nail in with the skinny side of the hammer drinking games. Yeah. And we got dice cups behind the bar. And so it's, it's supposed to be a spot. We all come uh, after sports and uh, we got a softball team. So it's, it's been really fun, but I'm to be clear. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Karen does. <laughs> I just show Thanks, Karen. Up drink and give her a bunch of bad ideas yeah yeah well she knows like how it. to hone your grand idea of a good time into like a functional hey let's get it let's get this organized and make sure everybody right. doesn't hit their head exactly so exactly. Yeah, yeah it works yeah. out great so that's been that's been fun but it is an interesting transition to go from if you look at the whole path to you know yeah the, a, a mosley sports I talk bar. about the path and like you look back you're like how the fuck did i make it over this path <laughs> you look at how did i not die right there you yeah. know i the mean 180 cosack so know. many yeah. times right yeah, yeah. we yeah. asked first tie fighter <laughs> we all were in utah <laughs> yeah, exactly. for one time john and we all were skiing and everything and then during part of the day I, I was made into a mogul and they were jumping off of me and uh-huh. all kinds of stuff that's some shit pete would yeah. do yeah no, yeah. it was it was great. That, yeah, I well, file that in category. I of was shit Pete would do. easily the worst skier in the group. <laughs> right. So you have to find your thing. And I'm like, that's right. My, I'll be the mogul. mogul. Yeah. yeah. And I forget what trick you did off. You were always game time. though, dude. Oh, always. I mean, the Pete will do it. Absolutely. <laughs> well, a thing that we did was I love that. we were thrown into laundry like laundry carts. And this is on a mountain, and then the shoving and the running started. And we were in there. We did just like a laundry cart race. Which inevitably ends in some kind of a crash. Or yep, whatever, right. We were know? a dude perfect, a jackass, yeah. like you said <laughs> totally. before. Sort yeah. Of. yeah. Loveless. Anyways. That's a guy who. Yeah, Loveless was. That guy had no regard for his own safety. He was an <laughs> inspired. He was the original jackass. Yeah. The original absolutely. dude perfect. And then, you know, if their internet was, existed when he was. He, he, and I, I love. He was. It's, believe it or not, like, even though my brothers are awesome, this guy, Todd Loveless, you guys probably are like, who the hell are they talking about now? Was. He was a. A little bit of a wild man, but a freestyle skier. And from the East Coast, came out to live in Squaw and try to make it as a skier. But the dude was, like, uninhibited. Yeah. And positive attitude all the time. Never yes. got down. Was always, like, ready for char- to charge. And I, I actually, I really enjoyed that. And, like, yeah. as a kid, he had an influence on me. 
in a way to like be a little little loose and yeah. you know be a little silly and be a little loose and and uh count his influence like pretty high you know and, yeah uh, same. And, he's, and he's doing great because if you think the line is here he's uh, on the other side of it totally. doing backflips totally man like where, the, where is he now he lives in tahoe he i think he he's like i think he might be a postman Nice. He has five kids. Wow! Lives in Squad, coaches and coaches skiing, and I think he was is like a, a works for the post office. Awesome! Yeah. <laughs> it's just like living. That is awesome. It's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> so he's easy. alive. Most yeah. importantly, that's <laughs> right. like you so know that's times. alive. And his kids are ripping. And how most, many lives have you both had? Both nuts still. Jesus, Who knows? But he's know, still man. alive. How many yeah. lives have you had? Yeah, I, I'm way over nine. <sighs> yeah. I mean, if you, you think broke think about the fact that C five, that was that was scary yeah Yeah, that's the one that just came to mind right there. yeah Yeah. so we had a you don't have to answer that question but um we had jay fitzo jimmy fitz he does backflips on the motorcycle oh okay right the fitz army is his his thing Uh uh-huh and uh we were talking and you know people in his profession they die yeah and so he got deep into the moment and all of a sudden his dead friends showed up and it was Uh heavy because you know like you do make it through but not necessarily through any control of your own you know it's one guy yeah, falls sometimes around you do. or whatever it's heavy if you're lucky yeah but you know you spent a lot of time way up in the air too and the fact that you broke your neck yeah you know holy cow but you could have broken your neck plenty of times no and that's what i think was the most poignant part about that 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 i broke my neck in that situation is because i had done way crazier shit yeah you know and it made me think wow i'm lucky here like it's time to take the chips off the table yeah like i got away with so much and then you know i got hurt on this one little just over rotated a backflip real simple in a mobile course like something that i i mean i've over rotated triple twisting triple backflips from you know 50 feet up yeah. and like missed somehow my, escaped missed that my, oh my god or tumbled down i mean you know in alaska where i didn't read the freaking polaroid right and pulled up on a cliff that i didn't even know was there and Ugh. backflipped over it and like you know i've done way more stuff that should have you know hurt me and then this little simple thing where i was a little cavalier and didn't look at you know didn't do the proper like inspection almost took took you out and that's you you see that in yeah. life right where it's like but it's all like a profile of risk right like it all it, you can't isolate it because it's all like odds adding up and and then you know so it's but that definitely was like I, okay i got it um yeah um, i gotta gotta make some change real changes here you know i gotta wait where you turn the corner and you get a little too much wisdom to be a freestyle skier that's right well and, and <laughs> that that was what ultimately yeah that's true and that was after i was retired but but yeah, no, I think that's, that is a, that is a thing. I mean, that's a thing when you, I, I find myself now when I'm recording like more Miller segments and stuff like that. And I will, I will occasionally say yes to go ski a big mountain or something like that and do something. But when I first knew I was done was when I would get up there and I'd be like, fuck, I'm like scared, you know? Yeah. Oh man. And it's not like you're not scared in situations. Sure. Yeah. But you actually had a much better sense of what the stakes really were. Right. That's it. That's a good way to put it. You just, you know, the stakes too much. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So one of the, my baselines is, is that no one right now is looking at me over iron sights deciding yes, no. Yeah. You know, they don't have a finger on a phone yeah. to go kaboom. Sure. And it changes like, you know, what's hard for me or what's impossible. You yeah. Know? I, Cause even like failure is like, whatever, you know, I don't fear that. Do you have a similar mechanism where you're like, look, I've been upside down at 50 feet spinning and flipping sure. like crazy. Yeah. Like this is easy. I'm running a bar. Easy. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And and you're talking about having like military chain of command yeah. that's yeah. helping you decide what to do, or is that? Well, what no, you're no. I mean, about? I, I was largely about, on my own. You're just saying, like, when you go to make what? But then, are what are you referring well, to? Well, I'm setting my, my when I look at my meter on what's possible and what's scary, and yeah, what's yeah, scary yeah. What, what I'm willing to do. I, yeah. One, I have no problem saying I'm not doing that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I don't need I don't need to prove. And that's a huge step right there. Yeah, I don't need to prove my manhood. Check. Like some guy yeah. tried to pull my card the other day. Because I was drinking White Claws, and I'm like, right, I'll drink shots. I don't give a fuck. You can't. Like, I'll drink whatever the hell Someone I want. Someone tried to what? Pull your a card? A White Claw. Yeah, my man card. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was yeah. drinking White yeah, Claw, and yeah, I'm like. Yeah. Those things are good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, just, I just drink it. I'm not <laughs> yeah. judging. I'm drinking. Just in general, like, like oh, I don't know. Like, uh, I'm, I'm a podcaster. I don't fear reaching out to Tom Hanks or whoever right. it is. Right. Because 
no, no one's trying to shoot me today. Yeah. No one's pressing nine <laughs> on the phone going yeah. boom, right? <laughs> so if that's, if yeah. I can handle that, well, this ain't scary. Sure, sure. But you've done, I, I wouldn't want to jump off a, I've tried to go off like the big kicker jumps when I was working at Iraq. I went to squat. Yeah. And they had like the, the it was a squat, probably squat. It was a ski park. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm working my way up to the bigger and bigger ramps. And then I thought, what the fuck am I doing? I make all this money. Why am I for free jumping you know, across these? Yeah. And that was pretty much the end of my ski career. I realized, what am I doing? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. By far, the hardest thing I do in my everyday life is make those evaluations. Okay. But it's, it's, there's no formula. Yeah. It's all, uh, it's a matter of making the evaluation, like sitting there and saying is what is the upside for me on this? Yeah. And, you know, and that's, I think what changed my, and you know, when you're, it's just different when you don't, there's, there's something about, like you said, not caring if someone's going to give you shit for drinking a white claw. And, yeah. and that's a, it's a, it's, 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 it's like a, you know, simple thing to say, but it, that's, a, that's like a perfect example yeah. of the difference between being older and, and, and being younger is where I, you, I used to care about shit like yeah. that. You know, like I wouldn't, I want to, I want to be, I want to be known as the man. I want to have some, you know, like I want some, some cred, you yeah. know? And so I, the, the shit I used to do just for street, just for street cred, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like that's ha half the shit I did was for street. I mean, I did the dinner roll for street cred. I mean, <laughs> right. I did. Cause I was trying to talk to this new free skier audience and I did that for, yeah. for them. I mean, I, I, I couldn't have cared less what I got paid. I was going to do that for street cred and yeah. the shit you do for street cred when you're young is just it's insane if you look back at it so yeah. helps to have that out of the way it helps to you know <laughs> you realize the stakes on that that's too. that's right that's right yeah yeah oh yeah exactly what happened to grass skis <laughs> how come those didn't take off they live on youtube oh okay yeah no i mean I, I don't know i've never done them but they look rowdy and fun yeah I think they're probably hard. And I just remember them dangerous? from an episode of Chips, I think. Oh, really? Uh, they were on Chips? No, no I, way. You know, it was like, that guy's down there. Hey, give me those. And Shit, then they man. take off on the grass skis. <laughs> Putting product placement. It was yeah. just somebody's bad idea. Yeah. yeah. Hey, That's what good. what else are you plugging before we button up oh, here? Oh, sure. We're rounding third base. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. We're sitting in uh, the fall right now, which I'm assuming is current with somewhere. And... Um, this is the time of year that, you know, winter starts to ramp up. So the Warren Miller movie is coming out just nice. before I came to see you guys. I did a scratch read on it. And so I'll be on the road touring that. And then uh, Squaw Valley is, is uh, you know, my, my home ski mountain. And so I'm always trying to get people to come there. The so if you're a skier, you're listening to that show. Um, I'll be out there over the holidays skiing with people. Obviously, you guys hit the podcast. You hit the, you hit the bar. And so, you know, the one thing, if you want to see more of me, there's Johnny Mosley's Wildest Dreams, which is the content series I do for California's marketing arm. And that's kind of fun. And you just type that into YouTube, Johnny Mosley's Wildest Dreams. And right on. I, I, what's cool about that is I actually produced that. I, I, that was my show. I executive produce it. And so nice. what you're seeing is kind of uh, authentic to me, uh, stuff I want to do. It's like my bucket list of stuff I want to do. And I somehow roped california and they let me do it so. right not only letting you do it but <laughs> yeah getting you in there yeah so so that's it that's my plug i appreciate that well but i think that what what has happened is that there are enough of us who say you know what he's always doing something cool that johnny mosley yeah and so there's a lot of people who are eager to see what you're up to and whatever it is that you are doing at the time you yeah. know why wouldn't we try it because you got all this stuff going for you because you try stuff because your bar is that high because you've done all the things that put the stakes at well i've already been upside down at 50 feet i can do this and then suddenly you're doing something that the rest of us who haven't been upside down at 50 feet go yeah i'm almost cool enough to do that second or third thing that he did yeah so you know i mean it's it's a great example when you're able to take olympic success and for all the greatness that that is, and turn it into, this is what peak performance looks like. How about we, everybody, ratchet up their regular performance and get a little better? So there you go. That's what Johnny Mosley means to if us. If I can do that, I, I, that's very cool. I appreciate that sentiment. Cheers, man.